El LB1. This is for 4G 2021 in the Humahuaca zone. And next, we will be having the tag by Stelio Vitalis. City JSON, 3D city models for everyone. And um, it's all yours. Uh, will you be Ah, oh, no, you are sharing already, sorry. Okay, so go. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, buenas tardes. Um, so this is a presentation. I'm Celis Vitalis. I am from City Information Group, City Delft. And this is a presentation about 3D city models for everyone. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, about city JSON, how we try to use that to do fun stuff with 3D city models. So let's start with what 3D city models are, actually. So uh, 3D city models uh, are, um, it's probably a bit broken. Can you see my slides? I hope so. So the 3D city models are a way of uh, representing the urban environment with 3D data. You can think of them as some sort of um, 3D uh, shape, although they are more structured. So um, the main idea is that we standardize certain features, like we have buildings, we have roads, we have vegetation and stuff, right? And there's a, a standardized way of how to represent these things. Uh, but uh, except for this, just flat thing as we normally have in GS. We also have semantics. So think of a building, right? Uh, if you had a 3D shape file, you would only have like the geography of the building and its attributes, right? But uh, sometimes we want to have more deep hierarchy. So we want to have the um, information about the individual roofs uh, or the surfaces that are walls and stuff. And we want to have both the type that they are also, and also sometimes attributes about that. So let's say, one wants to store the solar potential of a specific roof slope. So what, for this specific surface, they could uh, attach certain attributes over there. So this is uh, the main characteristics of 3D city models, of course, this semantics of the complex data model they, they have. So uh, 3D city models um, can be used in certain applications. Uh, you can see some examples here. Um, mm. Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, uh, I didn't see the the slides cut out. I don't know if okay. they are like that or. No, they are not in me. But, uh, Can you try sharing again? Maybe something is yes. coming out of the page. One moment. Sorry for the problems. Let's see now. Hmm. Okay, let me. Try to put them. Okay, it, can you try changing it just to be sure? Uh, oh, it's still know. happening. Yes, I don't know why is that happening. Can you try maybe in window mode? I don't know, maybe it might be a oh, issue sure. with full screen. Yep. Uh, sure. Let's see that. Oh, that's better, right? Okay, now it's working perfectly. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Really sorry about that. No problem. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, so um, so as I was saying, these the models they have this complex uh, data model, etc. Um, and they can be used in certain applications. So here, is, here are some examples. So you can be used for short operational estimation for visibility analysis. Theory cadastres, all the things. For instance, in the Netherlands now, the new environmental legislation uh, really needs to have 3D data because it has a 3D algorithm to compute these things. So you can see some examples there. Um, the last notion about 3D CD models that uh, I guess it's better that you know is the notion of LODs. So we um, this is this is much of the generalization aspect from cartography, I suppose. So depending on the application, you might need a uh, different complexity of geometry uh, because we don't always need the most complex geometry for any application. And therefore, we have this notation of LOD 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then that was initially a simplistic way. You can think of the first column that you see over there on the left. But then it was defined to have also the horizontal aspect into uh, consideration. So you can have LOD, for instance, 1.2, uh, which means prismatic objects uh, with enough 
detail on the horizontal aspect. Or you can have LID 1.0, which basically means just some bounding box of some sort. Um, so what, uh, what am I, why am I talking about HCD model for everyone? So we've, we've had CDGML for a long time, and it has been an OGC uh, standard uh, for a while. And, but the problem with CDGML is that there wasn't too much software support. And for us that were developers and we're working with developing software against it, we many times figured out it's really hard to work CDGML files. And that's not a problem CDGML per se as a data model, because there are two aspects there. There's a data model. So as I said, all the theory about how you describe objects and how you subdivide them into individual semantic surfaces and stuff. But it was more of the inherited problems that you get from GML and coding. And I think if everyone has ever worked with GML files, they probably understand what I'm talking about. So the idea was like, could we come up with a JSON encoding of the same data model and simplify things? Because with CDGML, may often, may, quite often we would just develop some piece of software and we were fine for the most part, but there would be some corner case here and there, and quite often there would be an, a corner case that would break things. And then we came up with CDJSON, and the focus of that was to make it uh, easier for developers and for users. So you can go to cdjson.org right now, and then you can see everything about cdjson. And the point is, of course, that we need to have more information. It needs to be more transparent to use the user, easier for users to approach. And this is what I'm going to talk about today mostly, like the ecosystem, the software that uh, you can use, and mostly what kind of fun things we can do with 3 cd models now that we have two, two tools after all these things. This started three years ago by calling a client to Guladu and everyone started contributing from the group. And now I think people from uh, different groups and uh, disciplines and companies, they are also contributing to the project and that's really nice. Uh, so what you can find if you go to civilization.org, you can find some tutorials for users, how to download data, how to visualize them and stuff. You can just go and read about stuff. And if you're a developer, you can also go there. And I think parsing a JSON file is quite straightforward, but you can also go to that and get the specifics on how to work with CDJSON specifically. Um, of course, there's a lot of CDJSON data. Uh, most of it comes from like CDGML data set that they were released and we just converted to CDJSON, but more and more we see new cities uh, or new organizations just releasing data in CDJSON format. And I think a good example is a project that I presented yesterday and tomorrow, my colleagues, uh, Balas Tuka and Ravi Peters is going to present as well. It's called 3 Bach, and it's 10 million buildings for the whole of the Netherlands. And it has been produced in three different LODs. So like from simple prismatic uh, buildings to more complex roof structures. Yesterday we presented the, the viewer and tomorrow there's gonna be a presentation about the data itself and the process of uh, reconstructing them. And it, it is released uh, among others. Uh, it's, it's been released in OBJ, for instance, Geo package, but it's also been released in CDJSON. And actually there we saw also the power of this complex structure that I said before, that we can encode these things in a more uh, natural way, I think. So, uh, but what I want to mostly focus about today is the software, right? And um, if you go to CDJSON.org again, there's a, a menu option for software, and then you can see all the piece of software that supports CDJSON. As you probably see, it's pretty much all open source, with the exception of FME, probably. Uh, so I'm going to start with what we provide, what kind of software we develop for the users to, to play with. So what you can do. I think the logo might be on top of the links. So it's kind of uh, a pity that I'm going to share the presentation afterwards in the comments anyways. Uh, so all the links that have been hidden by the logo, you're going to see them anyways. So the first one is CJAO. CJAO is a Python library and a command line interface. So you can just download, uh, you can just install it if you have Python by using pip. And uh, it's basically the Swiss knife of CDJSON. You just use it uh, from the terminal and you can uh, split files, uh, you can extract LODs, you can compress, compress, you can merge files, you can do a whole bunch of things. Um, yeah, but this is more uh, terminal, so uh, or for, for developers uh, who want to do things with Python. So I wouldn't say it's the most user-friendly, but it's definitely a very feature-rich uh, tool and it's probably the one where we implement the most things. The second one is um, a macOS viewer, which is being developed by Ken Arroyo Hori from our group as well. Uh, it's not a CDJSON specific viewer. Uh, it supports other formats as well, OBJ. It used to support CDGML, but I think CDGML support is dropping now. It's open source as well. You can find it in the app store as well and you can just install it or you can find it in GitHub. 
um, and it's quite fast, and it gives you all the information you want to know. The third one is uh, Ninja, which is a web viewer. It's the official CDJSON viewer. You can just go right now to Ninja to CDJSON.org and it's there. So as long as you download the CDJSON file, you can just drag and drop it there and you can immediately start navigating around. And the cool thing is you can see both the field data and the semantics on the left. And you can start understanding the hierarchies there, like the buildings and what part in the children they exist and all this information. And if we have enough time, I might be able to show you a small demo of that towards the end, depending on how many uh, questions we have. Another one is QGIS plugin that we have developed uh, again. Um, this is called CityJSON Loader. You can just find it in the plugins uh, repository of QGIS. If you just open QGIS, you go to plugins, you will search for CityJSON, it's there. And actually, I think this is a very interesting and quite promising thing. It has been developed for like two, two and a half years probably, and you can use that to of the data. The interesting aspect here is that, you know, as I said before, this is a complex data model, and in GIS, we have this flat uh, relational data model, right? So uh, there's always a problem on how to go from one to another. How are you going to have like both buildings and the individual surfaces and stuff? So there's a bunch of options about how you want to load the data, and then unfortunately, you all have to have redundancies or you just have to discard some data. But nevertheless, you can load data and do fun stuff. For instance, you can load 30 bar, and let's say uh, LOD2. So you have semantic surfaces and stuff, and then you can split it by surface. So you have the floors, uh, the floor surfaces, and the wall surfaces, and the roof surfaces as individual features. And then you can filter only the floors, for instance. You can, uh, uh, you can merge these things and then you can keep only the, the footprints just like that with the attributes of 3 uh, That's one example. Later on, I'm going to give you uh, another hint about some things that we're working for QGIS. There's some basic analysis you can do with QGIS. There's also a 3D view in QGIS since uh, 3.0, which is cool, so you can use that as well. Um, but yeah, not that much that you can do with 3D processing for now, at least. Um, and the last thing that I want to talk from the piece of software, piece of software that we produce is uh, this Blender plugin, which is called App Date. This is basically uh, the outcome of a thesis by a master student, and we also helped a, little, a bit to make it faster and stuff. And uh, works quite well, surprisingly. So you can find it in GitHub, you can download it, you can install it in Blender. And if you're in architecture or something, you can just load the 3D CD model and maybe load a beam model next to it, or you can edit the individual city model, and you can actually save back the situation model, so you can make individual changes there. And that opens also the uh, the possibility of using uh, city models for architecture or even civil engineering or whatever you want. Of course, Blender, QGIS, all of these, they're all open source software as well. So everything is open, you can uh, use that. And on top of that, the plugins themselves. Now, a few examples of what others uh, did with CityJSON, so how the, uh, the ecosystem seems to be built by others, except for us. Uh, the CityGML 4G uh, and also CityGML Tools, which is a tool based on that. It's a Java library, and uh, it's built by Virtual City System, a company in Germany, and it's open source. You can uh, download to load CityJSON data and convert them to CityGML, et cetera. And uh, um, yeah, you can use CDGML tools uh, directly from command line to put, which is pretty much what CDGI is, but for CDGML to convert to and from CDGML. Um, this, I became aware of that to be honest this morning. So I just added it here, for instance, uh, certain toolkits uh, adding support for CDJSON. As far as I'm concerned, this is a toolkit about 30 urban analysis or something like that. But I think it was. Interesting. Uh, it's there. It's open source. There is an open source li li license, and there's a dual licensing where you can purchase something. But still, cool that these things exist. Uh, this is an extension that has been developed by um, um, by um, Belgian PhD candidate. I don't remember the name now. Uh, that's not nice of me. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, so CDJSON and CDGML, they have this concept of extensions and ADEs, uh, respectively. So uh, in CDJSON, we call them extensions. So the point is, like, if you are interested in something, let's say, energy consumption or something, and you want to standardize that. So let's say if you are interested in to 
how to model en energy consumption per building, then you want to say that, for instance, for energy consumption, I'm going to have this and this and this and this value and the range of these values is supposed to be this, for instance. And then this way you release that as an extension and then other people can use that extension to know that they should follow the same notation and they can check whether they are valid against this notation. And this specific extension is about point clouds, how to store point clouds in CPJ itself for whatever reason you might want to do that. Now, if you think that there are work in progress, uh, one of the support for GCP is in case you don't know, like WFS 3.0 is supposed to be more agnostic about the content itself. So one of the notions is that we could possibly use CPJs on there. And uh, I think JSON works well with the web. So um, yeah, we're working with some things here and there, some prototypes. Uh, there was a student uh, thesis there. Um, but, uh, that's uh, still a work in progress there. There's versioning, which is, I'm very excited about that because it's the topic of my PhD, which I'm supposed to finish very soon. And this is basically Git for City. So it's a way of having, let's say, some kind of a repository where you can have all your versions of uh, um, City objects and you can look into their lineage and stuff. And it's not only something that is, you know, something in a piece of paper or something. Uh, I've developed also this prototype where you can just find it on GitHub. And you can already play with that, so you can start having versions, branches, and stuff. I'm not saying it's 100% robust. I haven't seen it breaking, but like we, we haven't tested it that extensively. Um, and uh, yeah, the last bit I would like to talk about is applications, because applications are fun. Like it's fun to have all these tools, it's fun to have all this data, but most of the times we've seen like cities. Uh, Organization leading PVC models where it's nice visualization is happening. and everybody's excited and it's nice and it's cool, or someone just happens to take it somewhere and just do something. But for the most part, it's not really, we don't see them that much utilized, to be honest. So the idea is like, what kind of fun stuff we can do? So um, this is a piece of research that we started basically a couple of months ago, um, a bit more than that. But uh, we figured out PyVista and PyMES, which is two Python libraries. Uh, PyVista is based on VTK. And they are very easy to load. It's very easy to load CTJSON data there. Uh, later, you're going to see a repository where you can find some code about how to do that. And you can do a whole bunch of fun stuff. So for instance, here you can see um, with PyMES, we can do certain operations like intersections, differences, symmetric differences and stuff. For instance, here, you can see how we can use PyMES to do the operation and PyVista to visualize these things. So the, on, the, on the top left, you see the green outline is the original LOD1. The red outline is the original LOD2 from the debug for one building. And then you see the intersection of these two. So I think it's cool that we can uh, compute these things now. Uh, you can do some proximity analysis you see at the bottom left. You can, uh, at the top right, you see uh, some kind of um, a clustering of surface by normals, which is cool when you have triangulated surfaces and you want to group them together. And we use that to compute, for instance, search, search walls between buildings, which is uh, really useful for applications. For instance, uh, we know of some uh, uh, insurance company that was interested in the computing stats about these things in order to evaluate the, uh, the risk of a fire or something. Uh, or you can compute grids, like you can see at the bottom right. Um, and you can compute a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, we're doing 3D urban analysis based on that. Uh, we're computing a whole bunch of stuff like volume, the volume of convex hole, the volume of uh, the object, the orientated boundary box, and a whole bunch of metrics that they're supposed to describe the, the, the shapes. You can find this at this repository. It's currently a research undergoing, and we're going to publish that quite soon. Uh, but the repository is already public, so you can just take a look at the code and, I don't know, uh, have fun with it as well. Uh, you can run it against any situation data set and you get all this like, uh, I think it's about 30 to 40 different metrics and information about uh, data. And we're planning to use that for doing some pretty urban morphology analysis. Uh, the other thing, which I think is pretty cool, I started this to be honest personally as a side project this summer for fun. Uh, yes, that's how we have fun this uh, summer apparently with Corona. Um, so this is a way to incorporate PyVista in QGIS, which isn't that easy because of some issues specific with macOS and how to install it. But the notion is that you could have, for instance, I don't know if you can see, but on the top left, you can see an expression. And there's already like two functions there that I was able to quickly add. 
to compute the volume of the geometry or to identify whether it's a solid. And um, yeah, you can use that, for instance, to uh, for a, for the calculator to add one extra field, or you can use it to do um, customized uh, conditional formatting or something like that. Uh, a bunch of analysis, like for now only a couple, but we're gonna easily all the metrics that I said before as in the processing toolbox, and uh, hopefully soon you will be able to do all the 3D analysis that I said before in, from inside the uh, QGIS. So thank you. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, yeah, and this is my contact detail for the most part. Hi. Thank you very much for your talk, Estelios. It was amazing. And um, yes, we have some time for Q&A and we have some questions. First one is, did you find, uh, did you find CTGML difficult to work with? because of the SML encoding, or do you think the model itself is too complex? For example, supporting too many edge cases? Um, that's, that's a tricky question. The first, first, first uh, obstacle that one finds is the GML problem, right? Uh, the data model, yes, can be sometimes very complex. Uh, the problem is, but if, if I want to be honest, I mean, that's happening also to a certain extent with citization. We're trying to figure out and eventually how practitioners want to use these things. So we need to experiment more. We need more people to actually work with these things. And I think eventually all these things, they're going to be uh, simplified. So yes, CTGM sometimes can be bloated. I think it has been bloating more and more because we keep adding things theoretically without having people that actually ask for these things and they actually apply these things. But I think it's it's okay as soon as there is open mind and we can always uh, go forward and adapt. All right, I'm sure. Well, second question is: Are there uh, sorry? Are there already best practice approaches in how to compare between CTJSON and CTGML databases? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of the question. Yes, yeah, sorry. Are there very best practice approaches in order to compare uh, between CTJSON and CTGML? Best practice approaches to compare between them. Uh, well, for a database, uh, ah, if actually you can use CTGML tools to convert from CTGML to CTJSON. Fine, so that, that's just fine, right? So the databases. The, the database is another aspect. Uh, I didn't touch that, but there's still the CDDB, which is closer to CDGML. And this is one problem that we would like to tackle as well. The text CDB is also a bit of over complicated, to be honest. And uh, we were also trying to find ways to have a more simplified version for that. We had some master thesis, but we don't have an answer for that. But if you want to go from CDGML to CDJSON, you can just download CDGML tools. You can look it up. Uh, it's from CDGML4j, the same library. Uh, it's Java, so good luck with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it works for the most part. You can convert CDGM to CDGM. That's what we did as well. And the, the other way around, of course, if you need. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I think we have time for more questions. Uh, the next one will be, can you explain better how you publish CDGML data as OGC API features? Maybe I should copy that one. Uh, oh, uh, well, CDJSON, I suppose, because CDGML, well. Um, so I wasn't, uh, I haven't worked on that that much. But the point is that, um, um, well, with, with OGC API features, you're supposed to, let's say, you have a collection, which is probably before it was just a whole file, and you can just say, give me the first 10 ones, or give me the, the objects that they have these specific attributes, right? So the point is, I want to be able to just ask for 10 buildings that they have these features, or just like as many buildings that they have these features and paginate these things. And because this is a JSON snippet, we are supposed to be able to shorten that. So instead of giving you the whole file, we can just select these 10 files, and quickly a CDJSON file and share that. Uh, there are some technical issues with the fact that CDJSON tries to compress some things and we need to figure this out. But for the most part, this is uh, undertaken for now. Uh, we still need to see how this goes with clients and stuff. I hope that was a good explanation, Matt. Uh, if you have any more complex question, I, I would be happy to uh, discuss this over email or something. Sure. 
uh, we have a, a so time for one last question. Uh, what are the use cases of CTJSON compared to 3D tiles? Oh, well, that's uh, that's a good one, actually, because, uh, yeah, I was supposed to talk about 3D tiles. I didn't find the time to do so eventually. So 3D tiles suffers uh, from the same issue that CIS uh, data suffers. It's super fast. So um, that's a good thing. But it's flat. Uh, and that's where 3 cd models well, don't fit, right? So for 3 debug that I said, we work on the viewer. And we have the data, CD-JSON data, but we wanted to release them fast. If you want to do that, you eventually have to go with something like 3D times. But then you have to decide. It's the same as when you import CD-JSON data to QGIS. You have to decide that you either discard data. For instance, let's say I only care about the building as a whole, and I don't care about the semantic, the individual semantic surfaces, therefore I discard this. Or I care about semantic surfaces, which means I need to maybe copy all the attributes of the building for every surface individually, right? So eventually you either have redundancy or you lose some data. But 3D tiles has its own, I think, um, useful aspect that it can be used for disseminating fast and in the web. And CD is probably not the more appropriate way to do so. It's of an exchange format to download static data. Okay, I see. Thank you very much. And I think that's time. So thank you very much for your talk, Estelios, and for being here in Phosphor G. Thank you very much. Good night, buenas noches. Good night. And next, uh, well, we will be seeing you in Phosphor G.